Good afternoon and good evening. My name is Dorothy Hanna and I'm the program administrator for the CAST Ibn, MIT Ibn Khaldun Fellowship for Saudi Arabian Women. Welcome to today's IBK webinar presented by Dr. Arij Al Hazmi based on her research here at MIT this year titled Understanding the Mechanism of Actions of a Heme Binding Antimicrobial Peptide Using a Collection of Different Derivatives and a Novel DNA Based Strategy. Uh, after the talk, Dr. Arish will be answering questions, so please post your questions in the Q&A feature as we go along, and we will answer them at the end. <clears throat> to begin, our program director, Professor Kamal Yusuf Tumi, <clears throat> will introduce Dr. Arish's advisor, uh, Professor Graham Walker, and thank you to everyone for being with us today. Great, yeah, thank you, uh, <clears throat> uh, Dorothy, for the introduction, and I thank everyone for being with us uh, today for uh, Dr. Arige's uh, uh, webinar. Um, I am uh, happy to have everyone with us. Um, uh, I'm, I'm also very thankful to Professor Graham uh, Walker, who has been uh, supervising and, and working Arige's work. Uh, professor uh, Walker is um, a professor of biology uh, at MIT. Uh, he has been uh, working at MIT for over four years now. Um, his work, uh, uh, a notable work, has been in explaining the structure and function of proteins um, involved in DNA repair. Uh, <clears throat> and the uh, special applications have been in cancer and also uh, understanding um, the uh, effect in, in plants and, uh, and mammals. Um, so with this, I'll... Uh, 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 give the, uh, the floor to uh, Professor Walker to introduce uh, Dr. Arich. <clears throat> well, thank you. <clears throat> thank you very much, Kamal and Dorothy, for setting this up. It's, it's a pleasure and an honor to actually <laughs> introduce Arich, who is just a remarkable young scientist uh, and an incredible human being, as I'll try to give you just a tiny flavor of this as we go through. Um, well, uh, we're a long way from home at the moment. Uh, Reach got her uh, BSc uh, degree at King Abdul Aziz University in uh, Saudi Arabia. But then she took a bold step and came to Canada. I'm Canadian actually, I grew up in Ottawa and uh, did a master's degree in Saskatoon in Saskatchewan. And uh, there she worked on an aspect of bacterial DNA repair that was right on top and overlapped with a lot of work I'd, I'd done in my career. But then um, not minding the uh, difference in climate, went to Edmonton, which even for Canadians is a cold place to be, and did her PhD there uh, where she uh, picked up uh, work on um, medical microbiology by focusing on an as important aspect of uh, some streptococcus isolates that cause invasive disease. And um, then uh, moved from there um, back to uh, Saudi Arabia and where she's an uh, assistant professor of medical <clears throat> bacteriology at Taiba University in Medina. And um, so, I regenerated my life when I got a call from this wonderful program saying, hmm, we've got an interesting candidate, maybe you'd like to meet her. And I looked at Arija's CV and looked pretty interesting. So we set up a little Zoom talk and uh, my goodness, I must say it was in about five minutes. I was dying to have her join my lab. <laughs> we were on the phone for probably, I don't know, a long time talking about this, talking about that. And um, it, uh, so that all sounded wonderful. And uh, Arij was, I think there were 93 candidates. She was one of the five who was selected. So it was quite an honor and we were both looking forward to her coming, but this is where I began to learn something about uh, Arij as a person and her resiliency and persistence because then catching us both blindsided or university decided they didn't really want her to go right now. <laughs> so she couldn't come and take this fellowship, which was uh, a huge disappointment to Arij and to me, I must say, and we conferred about this. And uh, with help from MIT too, I think, and support, she 
tried again, and uh, this time it worked. I wrote too, and somehow it all worked out. And uh, she arrived. I think it was was it on New Year's Day? I think last 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 year back in another what was another world at that time I guess uh, but um, she didn't make it easier for herself she brought her she had her two sons and her daughter was with her and her husband was here for the first little bit getting settled in and uh, I guess finally with some concerns about health it was decided to be probably better for a daughter to be in Saudi Arabia, but that means that Arij has not seen her daughter for a long time now and uh, is really looking forward to getting back. But she's been here with her two sons who are eight and 11 and um, not only doing all the stuff I'm gonna tell you, but being a, basically a single parent. And that was challenging enough. Uh, but then in mid-March came COVID and suddenly the <laughs> kids were at home and uh, she couldn't go into the lab. And even when we could go into the lab, we kind of ramped up to 25%, 50% and uh, finally up. But um, it's been, uh, she's shown such fortitude and such courage and just such cheerfulness throughout the whole thing. I, I'm so impressed. Uh, what a colleague to have. Um, she picked up, uh, we talked about possible projects and decided that the sort of second area I work on, which is a symbiosis between a bacterium and a plant that um, you'll hear about, was a way of learning some key things about particular defense molecules called antimicrobial peptides that she'll tell you about. They've been adapted for a slightly different use in, in uh, symbiosis, but you could get a lot of really fundamental research. And uh, in spite of all the obstacles that I've, uh, I've uh, talked about, she made some really major breakthroughs and she's, her contributions are gonna be reflected in some papers that are, will be in the pipeline soon. Um, but this wasn't, if this didn't sound challenging enough, um, she <laughs> managed to take a bunch of courses over at Sloan and actually earned an MIT Management Executive Education Certificate from the Sloan School of Management. Um, uh, and part of this she managed to do during this complete shutdown. <laughs> she was not only doing stuff related to her research, she's doing this. And I'm in awe, Arija, I don't know how you pulled it all off, but um, you're just, uh, you've been, a wonderful scientist to have in the lab, incredibly excited by what you've done. I hope what you've learned will help you when you go back. You've been an amazing member of our research group, and especially as we all had to kind of support each other through this tough time, you've just been terrific. And I, you've been a great friend too, I must say, over that uh, time. And uh, it's just so wonderful to have had you with you. I'm gonna miss you dearly when you desperately when you go but it's uh it's great and we're only a zoom call away anyway so anyway i'll turn the floor over to you. you brought to us yeah okay <clears throat> going to share it now. So uh, I think you can see my slide now, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, great. So uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, um, uh, it's such an honor and privilege to be amongst all of you here today. Thanks, you, thanks for uh, taking time out of your busy schedule uh, to attend this webinar, and uh, I hope you will uh, enjoy it and learn something uh, out of it. And um, I want to say at the beginning, I take pride and inspiration being a member of Professor Walker Lab. It's, um, uh, it's been amazing. Thank you, uh, Professor Walker, for all the good words. Thank you for accepting me in your lab, actually. And uh, it's been a pleasure working with you and all the amazing scientists uh, in your lab. So before jumping to today's talk, uh, I just wanna share with you uh, my agenda for today. So I'm gonna start talking about one of the biggest challenge public health uh, has been facing worldwide, which is antimicrobial resistance. And then from there, I'm gonna move to talk about uh, how we can overcome this challenge and specifically talking about identifying new classes of antimicrobial agents. 
And then from there, I'm going to talk about um, uh, what I have been doing in Walker Lab, which is uh, uh, developing uh, an, uh, a new system to characterize the mechanism of these uh, antibacterial agents. I use this me method with, the other, other, with other method, methods to characterize the, um, uh, the mechanism of action of uh, um, a specific and uh, interesting peptide, plant peptide, uh, with a promising antimicrobial activity. And finally, I'm going to share with you uh, some of my uh, post IBK plans. So, to start up, I, um, antibiotic have uh, saved many and many lives worldwide. But these drugs actually are losing their effectiveness because of antimicrobial resistance. Uh, resistant infection can strike anyone, children, seniors, uh, healthy people, and sick, sick people. Uh, and treating uh, resistant infection actually uh, is very costly. It costs the US care system about uh, 21 up to 34 billions of dollars annually. Many families have suffered the effect of uh, antimicrobial resistant infection, and indeed some patients have lost their life due to, uh, due to these kind of infection. A very touching report uh, published by um, Infectious Disease Society of America um, uh, compiling a heart-wrenching story about family who lost one of their members due to this kind of infection. The name of the report is The Faces of Antimicrobial Resistance. Uh, it's, uh, this report is, uh, is part of uh, the American Society initiative effort to seek global commitment to create antibiotic research and development enterprise to produce more systematic antibiotic for clinical therapy. The path of antibi antibiotic discovery um, actually uh, from lab into um, uh, clinical uh, treatment um, or clinical setting has a high attrition rate. And you can sense that from this uh, antibiotic discovery timeline I prepared. So all uh, to take you through it, um, uh, all the green circle represent a timeline when an antibiotic has been discovered and has been used for treatment. And all the red circle represent a timeline when a pathogen has been Evolve, has evolved some kind of resistance to the existing and discovered antibiotic. Antibiotic discovery started uh, in the 40 with penicillin and streptomycin, and uh, between the 50 and the 70, uh, more than 20 classes of antibiotic have been discovered. And this era actually known as a golden era of antibiotic discovery. And not before the 90s, only two classes of antibiotic have been approved by the FDA for treatment. A very striking story came out in 2016 about a female patient in her 70s uh, diagnosed with a systematic inflammatory response and then uh, developed um, uh, septic shock and died. And this patient actually was uh, infected by a nasty bacteria that caused pr um, problem in the respiratory system, but actually also uh, was resistant to all 26 antibiotics have been approved for her treatment in the US. So the antibiotic resistance has been increasing and spreading all, all over the world. And with the low uh, base of uh, 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 antibiotic discovery development, this provoked uh, some kind of ur uh, urgency to address this, um, um, uh, this issue. And one way to do that is by identifying new classes of antibiotic. And one of these classes is antimicrobial peptide. It's a tiny protein produced by a living organism as a, one of the first line of defense against potential harmful encounter in the, in the surrounding. These antimicrobial peptide amps actually uh, exhibit um, a broad activity. It can kill bacteria, yeast, fungi, viruses, and even cancer, uh, cancer cells. Speaking about uh, the effect of antimicrobial peptides specifically on uh, bacteria, uh, this uh, amps uh, actually uh, can um, interact with the cell surface, uh, the cell surface of, bac uh, of bacteria, and uh, create some pores in the cell uh, in the uh, in the cell surface, which lead to cellular leakage and eventually to uh, cell death. 
And these amps also found to be able to transport it inside the cell, interact with different uh, target inside the cell and block some important uh, processes, which can also lead to cell death. When we can find this AMP, it can produce and express by uh, various li uh, living organisms, uh, mammals, uh, insects, uh, marine creature, and even in our system as a human, uh, in our gut, uh, different kind of uh, AMPs can be produced uh, either by our system or uh, healthy bacteria that live in our gut. Uh, these amps actually in nature evolve to uh, perform um, uh, uh, additional biological activity. And in the plant world, one example is a specific kind of peptide that uh, uh, actually important to establish a, a mutual beneficial relationship between a soil bacteria known as a rhizopia and a plant, a specific kind of plant. So the plant allows the bacteria to invade the cell and live inside the, uh, the plant cell and the bacteria function as a fertilizer for the plant. So what the bacteria do for the plant is uh, converting atmospheric nitrogen, which is a, a form of nitrogen uh, uh, plants cannot be used into a more accessible form. And this process is known as a nitrogen fixation process. So plant, specific kind of plant, allow uh, uh, soil bacteria rhizopia to invade the cell and live, the, uh, live inside the, the, uh, the, the plant roots. And as a response, the plant uh, develop uh, a new organ, which is, uh, uh, is known as a nutule, where the uh, soil bacteria can grow. And in the nutule, so uh, the bacteria to be able to do the nitrogen or perform nitrogen fixation, it needs to go through some changes. And these changes meditate by uh, plant peptide uh, produced in the nodule. And this uh, peptide actually known as a nodule cysteine rich peptide, rich peptide. And there are some plants uh, um, uh, are able to produce more than 700 uh, uh, members of these peptides. One representative of this peptide is NCR247, which has uh, been studied uh, in the Walker lab uh, for uh, many years. And um, uh, it has a specific characteristic. It's one of the smallest uh, uh, peptide uh, um, uh, in NCR family with only 24 amino acid. As you see in the top, the some letters, these letters actually abbreviation of amino acid that make up the um, uh, NCR 247 sequences. Uh, four of these amino acids are cysteine, uh, highlighted in, uh, in uh, yellow. And uh, this uh, amino acid cysteine is able to form um, um, disulfide bond uh, in the, under the oxidized environment. Another interesting feature about NCR247 is uh, uh, it has a high number of uh, uh, positive charge amino acid. Um, um, represented uh, in the sequences by R, which is arginine, uh, which make NCR247 a cationic peptide with a net charge uh, uh, equal to plus six. Another interesting feature about NCR247 is 29% uh, of uh, the amino acid that make up NCR247 is hyd uh, are hydrophobic uh, amino acid, which, uh, which actually is an amino acid that hates water. And it explains the ability of uh, NCR247 to interact with uh, uh, multiple uh, proteins. NCR247 resemble uh, other AMPs um, uh, in its uh, antimicrobial activity. So, uh, in a high concentration of NCR247, it exhibits uh, antimicrobial activity against rhizobium, uh, the soil bacteria, against plant pathogen, and also uh, human pathogens. And one of the principal uh, antimicrobial activity of this NCR247, like other uh, AMPs, is uh, interfering with the uh, cell surface, with the membrane of the bacteria. 
by uh, performing uh, some kind of non-specific binding to the, uh, the, bact the, uh, the bacterial surface because it has a positive charge and most of the uh, uh, and uh, bacterial cell surf surface actually has a, a negative charge. So this uh, mitigate the interaction, the non-specific interaction with this, with bacterial cell surface. And uh, some uh, the, sometimes it, the pores can uh, be formed and lead as I said before, it to cellular death, uh, cellular leakage, and cell death. NCR two four seven also was, uh, was found to be transported in, uh, inside the cell and to interact with the multiple protein, which can be explained, as I said before, uh, because of the high hydrophobicity of NCR two four seven. Treatment of uh, uh, soil bacteria rhizopium with a low concentration of NCR247 was found to provoke um, a change in how the gene is expressed. And uh, specifically, uh, um, uh, one group of gene that is responsible for uh, importing, uh, importing iron into uh, the bacterial cell, which is very interesting uh, observation about NCR247. Another clue is um, uh, NCR247 from an evolutionary standpoint, it share high similarity to uh, the C terminus of, uh, uh, or the end part of uh, heme aptic protein and other bacteria. And heme actually, you may uh, uh, heard this word associated with hemoglobin, is, uh, is one of the component of our red blood cell. It's a flat molecule with four rings, um, as you see, and in the middle there is a, uh, uh, iron that can interact with oxygen and help in uh, oxygen transportation and storage. And heme is very important for uh, bacteria. It's uh, a cofactor for many, many, for multiple uh, protein, uh, which is responsible for uh, many um, uh, enzymatic processes inside the cell. So what's new about NCR247? Um, uh, a postdoc in uh, Walker Lab, SIVA, was uh, able to uh, um, uh, investigate um, the interesting uh, observation about uh, NCR247 uh, in terms of uh, turning on uh, uh, um, uh, iron uptake gene, the, the gene that's responsible of taking more iron inside the cell, and also uh, the, the similarity with the heme uh, binding uh, protein in other bacteria. And she found a very interesting finding. The first one is actually NCR247 bind heme with a high affinity. And also in uh, rhizobium, sub-inhibitory concentration treatment with uh, NCR247 turn on the iron uptake gene. And this is because uh, in, in rhizobium, heme is responsible actually for uh, regulating uh, iron, um, uh, uh, iron uh, uptake genes. So once heme is present in the cell with a low concentration is allow the bacteria to take more iron inside the cell. And once heme is on the other hand, uh, present in uh, a high concentration, it prevents the cell from taking up more iron inside the cell. A very interesting also feature uh, finding of, uh, of NCR247 is adding iron to, uh, to where the bacteria grow, rescue the inhibitory effect of NCR247 in rhizobium. So the proposed heme binding model by NCR247 is um, inside the cell, heme can present either as a free heme with a low concentration and bound to other protein, uh, which actually work, function as a cofactor for this protein and allow this protein to function. And this is not what makes this uh, protein happy. Once NCR247 gets inside the cell, it can bind to him, free him, and also can strip him from uh, other protein, the protein that bound him. And this can block some very important process and, uh, uh, and uh, in another way also uh, binding NCR247 to him can sequester iron and uh, hide iron. And this, uh, the bacteria cell can think it's, uh, it's actually starving for iron and that's why allow the, um, uh, the bacteria to take more iron inside the cell. But heme binding activity is not the only story for NCR247. 
NCR247, as I said before, resemble other uh, AMPs. It can interfere with the membrane. It may have also other uh, uh, intracellular ta target that can uh, mediate the antimicrobial activity of NCR247. And unfortunately, uh, the traditional way to study antimicrobial peptide um, uh, has focused only on treating um, bacterial cell with the uh, synthetic uh, peptide and then uh, do, doing the different kind of assessment, uh, either studying the effect, uh, the, uh, the effect of these peptide on, uh, on the, uh, if, if these peptide can kill the, uh, the bacteria or inhibit the growth of the bacteria or change the morphology of the bacteria or um, uh, so on. So, um, and also these cannot distinguish, this method cannot distinguish between the effect of uh, the peptide on the, uh, on the membrane and all the intracellular target of the, of the bacteria. And this is interesting because in bacteria, if, if we take a, a E. coli as an a, as a example for a, a, group, group, a big group of gram-negative bacteria, um, we found the, uh, the bacteria is, has a different uh, compartment inside, inside the cell. And to understand this, I'm going to briefly explain the bacterial cell structure in E. coli. So the bacteria actually it covers with the, uh, a cell wall in the, uh, in, the, uh, in, the, in the blue line, which gives the, uh, the bacteria its rigidity. And then after that, there is an inner, uh, outer membrane. And, out, uh, and uh, below that, we can find an inner membrane protein. And the space between an outer membrane and inner membrane is a periplasmic space with a different environment, different target for uh, uh, different target to any uh, drugs. Inside the the, the cell uh, the, or in the middle of the cell, there is the cytoplasmic with the, where the genetic material floating and most of the uh, and some of the uh, enzymatic reaction happening inside the cells. So the bacteria cell actually uh, consists of different compartments: uh, cytoplasmic, uh, periplasmic, and also uh, we have the the the, the, out, the, the outer membrane uh, uh, common target for uh, uh, antimicrobial peptide. So to understand the effect of uh, AMPs on different compartments of the cell, we cannot use the traditional method of uh, studying these peptides. So here I developed, a, an, uh, I developed an innovative strategy and system to actually dissect the, uh, the mechanism of action of AMPs on different uh, compartments of the cell. Uh, by allowing the expression of these uh, antimicrobial peptide in, uh, in uh, either in the outer membrane, in the periplasmic, or in the cytoplasma. So uh, the system I, um, I developed actually consists of three parts. The first part is an outer membrane protein projected from the C terminus into the external space. And the antimicrobial peptide linked to the outer membrane uh, protein by a tether. So it's holding the outer membrane uh, through uh, something like a rope. And then uh, the second part is an inner membrane protein projected from the C terminus into the preplasmic space. And the antimicrobial peptide actually here also is, is linked to the inner membrane through a, a tether. The third part is uh, uh, it's inner membrane protein, but actually here is projected from the C terminus into the C cytoplasmic space, and the antimicrobial peptide again is uh, linked to the inner membrane through a tether. And this system actually is regulated, which means it's uh, when we grow the bacteria that have this system, uh, the system is off, and after we uh, add a specific kind of sugar known as arabinose, the system can uh, be turned on. I tried this system with the three different peptide, our NCR247, and a mutated version of N uh, NCR247 where all the cysteine is mutated into serine. And this version of NCR247 shown, have shown, um, um, has shown uh, lower antimicrobial activity and also cannot bind to him. The third peptide is a small peptide, uh, um, does not have any effect on bacterial growth, and I use it as a control. Um, I constructed, uh, constructed nine strain, three strain for each compartment, uh, for the outer membrane, the cytoplasmic, and the periplasmic space, and each compartment have three strain. 
either a uh, three peptide, either NCR247, NSR247, or the negative control HA. And uh, speaking generally about the effect of antibiotic on bacteria, it has two uh, effects. Either it's uh, stopping the uh, or limiting the bacterial growth. So once you take off the, uh, the antibiotic, the bacteria can grow normally. And the other effect is it's killing the bacteria. So once you take the, uh, the, the, uh, the antibiotic, you see decrease in number of viable cells. And using the traditional way of studying peptide, uh, synthetic uh, NCR247, when, uh, when, uh, treated, uh, when E. coli cell treated with synth synthetic NCR247, it kills the bacteria at six micromolar after three hours of treatment. So the first question I asked, uh, um, what are, is the, the, the antimicrobial activity I, or the bacterial response I'm gonna see once I exp express NCR247 or the mutated version of NCR247 in different compartments of the cell. And for this slide is uh, about the outer membrane compartment. So um, actually we, uh, we have the strain NCR247, uh, NSR247 and the controlled uh, in the outer membrane and we grow it. I grow it uh, for a um, uh, couple of hours and uh, I added in some strain, I added uh, arabinose to um, turn on the system and other strain. And uh, on the other hand, uh, other strain was, uh, uh, there was no arabinose, so the system was off. And uh, I measured the growth of the bacteria for, uh, uh, for uh, six hours. Uh, I wanna draw your attention first to the, the, the red stars here. So uh, on the top, uh, the red star is close to this line, the orange line, which represent outer membrane in CR247 that has uh, in, uh, in CR247, but the system is off. So we see a normal growth or uh, the bacteria is behaving normally, it's growing normally. And once we turn on the system, we see inhibi uh, inhibition and bacterial growth after two hours, starting from two hours. For NSR247, I wanna draw your attention to the green circles. So um, uh, the one on the top, um, uh, the yellow line, it's uh, the NCR NSR247 when the system is off, so it's behaving normally. And once it's, uh, it's turned on, actually there was inhibition for, for, uh, in the growth after two hours, uh, like NCR247, but um, the, um, the inhibition is uh, uh, is lower uh, is um, is um, in, is le is is, um, is lower in in in, uh, in SR two four seven. So with, this suggests that the changing uh, in CR, the cysteine in, in, in uh, NCR247 actually uh, is important or cysteine is important for the interaction of NCR247 with the outer membrane uh, of bacteria cell. Uh, this slide is, uh, is for the cytoplasmic uh, compartment, which uh, I use the same strain, um, uh, I, I mean, the same peptide, so in CR247, in SR247, and the control. And once the system is turned on in the cytoplasma, in CR247, uh, CR show inhibitory effect after one hour. However, in SR247, from the, the green, uh, close to the green uh, star, um, grow normally, which is very interesting because NSR247 cannot bind heme, which suggests uh, actually that NCR247 in the cytoplasma, the, the predominant role maybe is associated with the heme binding uh, activity of NCR247. In the periplasmic, uh, once we uh, express it uh, NCR and NSR247, both show similar activity. Uh, the, the red one is the NCR247 and the green uh, stars is the NSR247, showing uh, inhibitory activity um, uh, after one hour, similar activity and similar pattern, which suggests actually maybe the activity we see here in the pyroplasmic is different than the one we saw in the cytoplasmic compartment. And to summarize, NCR247 
show uh, show uh, inhibitory activity on the three compartment. However, for NSR247, we only saw uh, the inhibitory activity uh, in the uh, outer membrane and in the periplasmic, but not in the cytoplasmic. And then I asked the question whether adding iron iron uh, and when um, to the when where the bacteria growing and turning on the system can rescue uh, the growth of uh, bacteria in different compartments. So uh, for our, our expressing out uh, in uh, NCR247 NCR in the outer membrane and uh, uh, NSR247 in the outer membrane, adding iron actually did not change or rescue the growth of the bacteria. So we saw the same inhibitory activity in both. Uh, where the blue line is uh, with iron and uh, the, the light blue is uh, without iron. And it shows similar activity for NCR247 and NSR247. But in the cytoplasmic, we show uh, we saw uh, um, um, NCR247 show um, different uh, activity. So adding iron to the media actually rescue the growth uh, of bacteria uh, that have NCR247, but not the one that have NSR247, which doesn't bind to him. So this is a, another piece of information uh, suggesting that uh, the primary role of uh, NCR247 in the cytoplasma is maybe due to its activity, uh, to heme binding activity. Adding iron to the, uh, the bacteria that have uh, uh, NCR uh, and NSR247 in the periplasmic did not rescue the growth. And this is another uh, piece of information suggesting that also that the activity uh, I'm seeing in the periplasmic is not due to, is, is not uh, similar to the one that I, uh, I, I, saw, I saw in the cytoplasmic compartment, which is, uh, we think it's uh, mainly by the heme binding activity of NCR247. The inhibitory effect of NCR247 across the different compartment uh, was different in terms of time. Uh, of time. So NCR247 show a faster activity in the periplasmic and the cytoplasmic uh, within one hour. Uh, however, in the outer membrane compartment, it took two hours to see the inhibitory uh, activity, which means actually it's, uh, which suggests actually it's um, because uh, uh, the binding uh, of uh, or the activity of NCR 247 is uh, in the outer membrane is not specific and needs more time to see the, uh, the inhibitory activity. And then uh, I asked the question if uh, the inhibition uh, we see uh, with NCR 247 uh, is it due to killing effect or static effect? So as I mentioned before, antibiotic either having um, um, a static effect which limit the bacterial growth. And once you take off the, the, the effect of antibiotic, you can see a normal uh, growth uh, of the bacteria because the bacteria will be able to multiply. And uh, a side effect once, uh, which means is once you take off the antibiotic, we, you see a decrease in number of viable cells. And I did it uh, for NCR247, expressing it in different compartments of the cell, in the outer membrane, cytoplasmic, and in the periplasmic. And actually, in, as you see from the, the, the blue line, in the outer membrane, NCR247 has a more aesthetic effect, while in the periplasmic and the cytoplasmic, it's a more a killing effect. We see degrees in number of cells over time. For NSR247, uh, similarly, expressing NSR247 on the uh, outer membrane has a, uh, has a static effect on bacteria, but in the periplasmic has a more killing effect. So um, to sum up this part, so NCR247 uh, possess multifunctional activity at the membrane and the intercellular size to achieve the fission killing of NCR247 we saw in the uh, in that uh, when you use the traditional way of uh, studying uh, NCR247 effect on E. coli. Uh, 
And the, uh, actually the, the effect of heme binding and the intercellular uh, inhibitory mechanism of NCR247 serve a very important role, contributing to the overall antibacterial efficiency of NCR247, as we saw in the cytoplasmic and the pyroplasmic expressing uh, NCR247 has a more killing effect than the outer membrane. Another approach I used to study uh, or characterize uh, NCR247 um, is very interesting because um, NCR247 and antimicrobial peptide generally is a very small peptide. So uh, it's easily, you can manipulate the sequence of these peptides and synthesize different variant of these peptides. And you can actually study structure function activity by doing that. Uh, uh, with different dr uh, derivative. And uh, uh, this is what I did with NCR247. So a library with uh, 24 different variant of NC NCR247 was synthesized with a shorter fragment of NCR247 having only the first 12 amino acid or the, uh, the last 12 amino acid and uh, a, a different other bunch of mutation in NCR247 that increase the net charge or decrease the net charge of uh, NCR247 or have the same net charge as uh, the wild type, which is uh, the original type of NCR247, but um, a different mutation in specific uh, site. Here are the, 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 the only, uh, the number is only for labeling uh, purpose uh, and N is for the first amino acid, uh, the, uh, the fra NCR uh, fragment that has only the first 12 amino acid and the C here is for the last, um, uh, uh, for the fragment that has only the last 12 amino acid. So we have this NCR247 with the very uh, promising antimicrobial activity, uh, heme binding activity, has a multifunctional activity on different compartments in the cell. So I asked the question whether uh, if we can use this as a therapy, to use this as a th uh, for therapeutic application, we, uh, we need to understand more about um, uh, if this uh, peptide uh, uh, exhibits some kind of toxicity to human cells. So I did two toxicity assay. The first assay, I used a human red blood cell as an indicator of uh, NCR247 toxicity toward mammalian cell. So a red blood cell was, uh, uh, were, were treated with uh, NCR247 in the wild form or uh, the different uh, variants. And then I measured the lysis the ability of uh, these peptide to lyse uh, the red blood cell. The last, uh, uh, the last, or the the one that highlighted with the, with the, with red, actually is the wild form, a wild uh, type of NCR two four seven. And interestingly, these peptide, the wild form of NCR two four seven, did not show any toxicity toward red blood cell. However, other variants show va um, variation of toxicity above the twenty percent uh, threshold. Another uh, uh, toxicity assay I have done is uh, using a HEC-293 uh, cell line, which is embryonic kidney cell line that's commonly used to study the genotoxicity and the cytotoxicity in drug discovery. I treated the cell with the uh, NCR247 in the wild form and the different variants. And then after 24 hours, I measured the, um, the number of viable cells and calculated the toxicity percentage. Again, NCR247 in the wild, wild form did not show any toxicity toward the um, uh, this cell line and other variants though um, so show some toxicity um, uh, above the 20% threshold. So in CR247 here we have it with a promising antimicrobial activity with the multifunctional activity with a low a very low toxicity profile it represents itself uh, with the multiple application theoretical application and uh, the final thought for today is the uh, during my time uh, in Walker Lab, I was able to uh, develop a tether system. Uh, and this system is the first approach to dissect the mechanism of action of antimicrobial peptide. It's a more a general approach that can be adopted to study various uh, antimicrobial peptides. And uh, this uh, tether system actually provided us with insightful data related to uh, NCR247, this promising uh, peptide um, uh, for uh, therapeutic application. Um, um, uh, uh, 
provides us with a, um, very insightful data related, related to the mode of, of action of this peptide. Um, another approach I used uh, is uh, using uh, or manipulating the sequences of NCR247 to study the uh, or characterize the mechanism of action uh, of NCR247. Um, this approach also is a general, it can be generalized to study the mechanism of action of various peptide. So uh, some of my plan uh, post IBK is one of the project I'm working on is uh, is using the, the the tether system and the other approach I used uh, for characterizing NCR two four seven with the different member of NCR peptide um, and uh, another project uh, I'm collaborating with a group of. Um, 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 smart and intelligent uh, computer science and uh, engineering uh, scientists. Uh, we were inspired by COVID and uh, we form a team to uh, develop uh, algorithm to study uh, or to predict the next pandemic uh, with the uh, aim to uh, get at the end, uh, end product of interface uh, based on this uh, um, model. Another thing uh, I'm working on is uh, collaborating with the two amazing scientists from Taiba University, uh, Dr. Ferdos and Dr. Nadia, and um, also uh, with a, an ambitious um, surgeon from King Faisal Specialist Hospital to identify, identify um, a microbial marker for um, uh, colorectal cancer patient uh, to replace the, uh, the invasive uh, the, on the common way to screen population for colorectal cancer. Uh, another uh, big plan for me is uh, I'm very passionate about teaching and I'm, uh, I'm happy to get back to my class um, uh, with my student and um, start teaching again once I, um, I get back to Saudi Arabia. And um, I just want to say at the end is um, IBK slash MIT uh, journey uh, was, wasn't a, a straight line uh, uh, road for me. It has um, um, some uh, very complicated uh, uh, moment. Uh, it has a uh, um, uh, tangled moment. It has complex uh, uh, loops. It has ups and down. Uh, I have faced uh, many challenges. Uh, it wasn't an easy for me. It's, uh, it's a hard work actually. And specifically during this uh, COVID-19. Uh, and many people have told me that um, I joined MIT in the worst time. Um, but actually I, I like uh, to look at the, uh, or turn this uh, negative experience to positive ex uh, experience. And uh, I'm a very strong believer. So I think all the uh, um, crucible moment and all the experience that I have been through this year helped me grow uh, personally and uh, leverage my skill and my knowledge, uh, uh, army with a new perspective and new understanding. Uh, um, and they, I'm, I'm sure it's gonna be handy in the future. Uh, and uh, actually I couldn't have done any of the work without the help of uh, great people in my life. Um, my family back home, um, my two boys here and uh, um, Walker Lab, um, the warm and the, uh, the kindness I uh, I have been experienced from the very first day I uh, uh, has touched me and has uh, amazed me actually uh, I couldn't have done anything without the help of Professor uh, Walker Siva uh, Fignesh um, Charlie Marcus uh, um, Kevin Prine and Mary thank you so much for your help and uh, for uh, being a great scientist and also a great fr friends for me. Um, also, my genuine thank, uh, thanks go to uh, IBK team, Professor Kamal, Teresa, uh, Nadia, and Dorothy. Um, um, without your help, without your um, uh, support, um, maybe I wouldn't be with you today. Uh, thank you so much, and thank you for uh, your attention, for your listening, for all, all the audience. And uh, I'm very happy to uh, answer all of your questions, and um, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your research with us today, Arij, and we appreciate you. As I was listening, I kept thinking, you know, heroes don't always wear capes. So thank you for helping to make the world healthier and safer in our future. Um, we are open for questions. So uh, please use the question and answer feature 
uh, and let us know what you're wondering about, what questions you have for uh, Dr. Arij, and we will give her a chance to answer them. Yes, Professor Kamal, go ahead. Yeah, yeah sorry, maybe it, it will be just easy for me to state it. Uh, yeah, thank you, Arish, you know, for this uh, great uh, presentation. Uh, this is uh, way, you know, far from what I do. I think the closest uh, that uh, the work that we have done to yours was in uh, DNA sequencing, you know, in uh, building actually instruments that do the sequencing at the nanoscale and looking at like one molecule or one uh, nu nucleotide, you know, one base at a time. Um, so, uh, and also our work or some of our work deals with the visualization, you know, to look at the nanoscale and see how things are happening. So I was curious whether uh, actually to you and also to, uh, to Graham, you know, whether there are any things here that need or can be or would be desirable to see at the nano scales, you know, what is, how are these things happening? Because this is what we can see with our high speed imaging that we do in our lab. Uh, imagine you can see maybe if it's a, uh, 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 you know, something dying, you know, that process of dying, for example, that you could see, or if there is an interaction between uh, different elements, you know, that you can see it like in, uh, you know, dynamically as it happens. So this is what we can do with our instruments. And I'm curious to hear from you guys on whether you have, there is such a thing, you know, in, um, in these elements. <clears throat> actually, what's in interesting about this tether system, it's uh, actually it's dissecting the, the activity of antimicrobial peptide in different compartments. And mm -hmm. actually we can study the morphology of the uh, expressing these peptide in diff or once it's expressed in different compartments. Department. And one other thing I didn't share with you is the studying uh, is doing a fluorescent uh, micro using the fluorescent microscopy to study uh, the effect of expressing, for example, uh, the outer the outer membrane NCR on the outer membrane and seeing if it can change the, the structure of the, the morphology of the bacteria. Is there the bacteria um, is bacteria morphology is changing? Uh, is it, uh, for example, getting uh, Flopping, or it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, indication of any change or this formation on the on the on the on the surface of the bacteria because of these peptides. Um, but uh, electron microscope has also been used to study these peptides using the the traditional method. But it's very interesting as uh, would be very interesting to use all the, the available technology, uh, for electron microscopy, fluorescent microscopy, and all the down like the stream uh, application to to study the, um, the effect of these peptides on, uh, on bacteria cells. And Graham, I'm sure you have amazing ideas you can share. Well, uh, maybe thank you for the offer and maybe it's worth a follow-up chat. Let me float just another one off the top of my head. I'm going to fill in something that Arich didn't have time to really <clears throat> uh, get to in, in her talk about this NCR peptide. The way Siva Sankri and Vignesh Babu actually found it was we were interested in trying to put stable isotopes into it. We wanted to be able to express it in the cell so we could grow it and then cleave it, so we fused it to a protein, maltose binding protein that's widely used as sort of a carrier protein, but this little tiny peptide at the back and we were gonna planning to clean it off, uh, cleave it off later. Um, but when they purified this maltose binding protein with a little bit of the uh, um, NCR247 peptide on it, it was brownish red and that, it was the initial clue that it was actually something was binding there and uh, Siva worked out, demonstrated very convincingly it was, uh, it was heme. But because it happened to be fused to this maltose binding protein, uh, Vignesh who did the protein purification put it over a sizing column and we were startled to find that not only did it bind heme but it subsequently multimerized and at least when it's fused to this very large, relatively large maltose binding protein, it formed a dodecamer. 
And so we sort of accidentally discovered this thing did two things. Um, it, the peptide binds the heme and we think this stoichiometry probably means that there's like a sandwich or something with one peptide on each side of that, uh, that heme molecule. And then it subsequently multimerizes in some way and some pre preliminary results that SIVA has, uh, where you take the free peptide and add uh, heme, it somehow forms multimers fairly quickly. But if you can do things uh, at the single molecule level and you can look at them really fast, um, we've got versions of that peptide that have a fluorescent label on them. <laughs> mm. yeah, and this would be... Might be, wonder if it might be worth a quick little look. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the thing is this, is that if the, if the process is slow yeah. in any one of these applications, you know, so taking images by any of the conventional instruments, you know, is fine because things are not changing that fast. But if you have uh, any kind of um, uh, a process, uh, you know, that might happen at a, uh, at a faster rate, uh, it would be maybe useful to see exactly what is happening, you know, from the beginning of that process yeah. you know, till the end of it, and then to figure maybe to have maybe more information uh, throughout the, uh, the uh, evolution, you know, of the process itself whether it's a binding or changing form or color or some uh, or uh, corrugation maybe on the surface that is how it is happening so it could be uh, yeah well, I, let's talk about it. it i think when we do just the pure peptide and the and the heme it's happening faster than anything we can measure in our lab let's mm. pick that up so it might be worth the chat sure yeah right. i look forward to it Graham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah That's exciting to be able to make a connection there. It doesn't seem that there are any questions coming in from attendees. So it means that you were very thorough, Arish, in explaining everything and mm -hmm. very clear. So yes. thank you again for being here. Thank you to yeah. all of our attendees. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank Arish. You. Thank you, Graham, for being with us today. Thank you, and this Arish. Is great. Yeah. Could I? add my compliments that was a lovely talk you know you put a lot of work into that and that was oh boy it really showed the work you did i thought it was really terrific uh, yeah. terrific talk and i hope people gathered it was exciting great <laughs> excellent Agreed. excellent great yeah. job Arish. we're so proud of you thanks for everything thank you Lisa, thanks for hanging in with me through that. Always. It's Very nice clear. to see you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's been a long journey, but I'm so happy to see this, um, these great results. So yeah. I, hope, it, I hope you're both very proud of this great accomplishment. Yeah, she's really pried open a new way to do things. And you know, you could, maybe you can get a sense of that. Anyway. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Just added stuff to cells, and now you can kind of put it in different parts of the cells and see what happens. <laughs> I think that's good. And, uh, Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Well, this have a good, great, yeah. a good day, good evening, depending on where everyone's logging in from. Yes, yes. This has been great. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Arish okay. and Graham. Thanks again. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Yeah. Dorothy, good Teresa, good thank you again. Yeah. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye.